What is good, everybody? The Bears make a couple of signings late here in the evening as they sign Nicholas Morrow and Lucas Patrick to the roster. We're going to talk about how, what kind of impact that has on the team coming this season and how quickly these guys impact the team moving forward. Let's talk about it starting now. If you are new to the channel, please like the video. Please subscribe to the page because we do talk Chicago sports daily over here on the Windy City Breeze, and we don't want you to miss a thing. So make sure that you hit that bell. This is the only channel that's talking Chicago sports, how Chicago talks. So make sure that you get in tune with us. Man, we covering everything. Bears, Bulls. Oh, I did that backwards. Bears, Bulls. How I be doing it? It's the reverse. Don't worry about it. Anyway, Bears sign a couple of nice players, a couple interesting players tonight, and Nicholas Morrow and Lucas Patrick, just some quick updates on the guys, what the Bears can expect from these guys and how quickly I think they will make an impact this season. Nicholas Morrow, right, is a guy to me that I believe will make a quick impact, especially with the Bears probably not bringing back Trevathan. So you're not going to have a lot of linebackers on this team already. You want to build out that depth there. You really just got Roquan, Caleb Johnson, and Joe Thomas on the team right now. So you want to start building out that linebacker crew. Here's the thing I like about this signing, right? And I don't think the I didn't see a price on it. If anybody sees how much the, the, the contract is worth, let me know in the comments below. I, did, I couldn't find it. But he should be an inexpensive of player based on the fact that he spent all of 2021 on IR. I know that's the instant <gasps> we signed another player that's hurt, but here's the thing, right? You got to look at his 2020 season. You also have to look at the fact that he's 26 years old. So you're not building out a team that you can't continue to build off of. If he hits the way he hit in 2020 and 2020, he had three sacks, three turnovers, 78 tackles, eight of those tackles are for loss and six QB hits. He was somebody who absolutely was coming on an undrafted free agent that got signed by the Raiders for the last four years or so. I think that if he can bring that same kind of fire to the Bears, you're talking about pairing him up with Roquan Smith, a beautiful one-two punch on that side of the football, uh, uh, um, especially with the improvement that you have now at your defensive line. And if you have that at your linebacker position as well, I think you'll be able to do some good things there defensively. To me, the Bears as weird as it is to say, right, with, with Iberflus' defensive scheme and what we know he did with defenses out in uh, uh, Indianapolis, I feel like the Bears' defense could be a lot better than we expected coming into next season with the, with the small signings they've made. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, though, here's the other thing you got to look at because we've been saying, hey, how do we get an old lineman in here? We got to protect Justin. And then we saw James Daniels walk out the door today. Now, the Bears were all over it. We didn't have to worry about it. And, and I think the Bears got a good win here in Lucas Patrick, right? There's a mindset here that the Bears are looking for. And I think that's why they let James Daniels walk today. Because there's a mindset here that Ryan Poles is looking for from his offensive lineman that we didn't see at all last year. Remember, Justin Fields got knocked over. The only guy who went over there to stand up for his quarterback was the rookie. And, and that's not the mindset that the Bears want to come into this season with. That's not the fire that the Bears want to come into this season with. They want maulers on their team. Tevin Jenkins is a mauler. Uh, 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 Larry Borum, I believe, can be a mauler. He's shown a little bit of that fire when he was on the field that he's not here for none of that mess. He's going to go out there and fight every single play. Lucas Patrick is that same kind of guy. He's that he's got that similar. Remember that Tevin Jenkins block where it's like that blind side block down the field. Lucas Patrick is a guy who, who who he plays like that. He plays through the whistle. Hey, listen, when the whistle blows, just know you're going to be on the ground. I like that uh, uh, you're making that decision. And here's the thing about it, right? You're probably now because he's coming in to replace Tevin Jenkins. I've said I would rather see the Bears go out and get a real left tackle, like a, not, a, a, somebody who's done it before. I don't want to slight Tevin Jenkins' successes, but somebody who's done it in the NFL before and done it successfully. I would rather see that and you put Tevin back at right tackle. But you're now getting Morrow in here, or, or I'm sorry, you're now getting uh, um, 
Patrick in here, he's probably able to replace uh, the production that James Daniels give you. By the way, the, the the penalties way down. He's He committed five penalties all of last season. And the other thing you love to see, he only allowed one sack all of last season. And let me tell you something. When you're playing for the Packers, you want to make sure you're only allowing that one sack. And the other thing that you like is that you're coming in here and you have somebody who's been in that Packers system, seeing as how we now have their quarterbacks coach as our uh, 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 offensive coordinator. You want to have somebody that can kind of guide the rest of the guys into it. Hey, listen, I understand we've all been playing football for a long time. Let me tell you how we did things over there. Let's bring that over here. Let's show that we can do that here. And, and let's all get on the same page with that. Having that guy that's already done that is going to be big for the Bears. And I think that, that that's something that uh, Lucas Patrick absolutely adds in. And to me, he's exactly what the Bears were looking for. To me, he reminds me a lot of what Jacob Noteboom was. And that's why I wanted to go get the Bears to go after him. That's why I wanted the Bears to look at. Somebody who was a backup most of their career, uh, got in there, played some good time, played some good snaps, and that you could put out there, and and he would be able to, you know, essentially become the starter and, and keep growing. Now, Lucas Patrick, 28 years old as well. Young. Young for a Lucas Patrick. So, able to get that youth in there. You're trying to build out this younger offensive line, but also a bit more of experience. And so, don't be surprised if you see him because he can play both sides don't, or both positions. Don't be surprised if you see him playing more center than guard even in this upcoming season taking more of the leadership role on this team because he has the knowledge because he has the experience because he's been in that Packers system with everything that that's already going on with Luke Getze starting off as our offensive coordinator so now you, he could even be your starting center for this team and you're still looking to build those guard positions out and 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 ride with Tevin Jenkins the tackle but having somebody in there with some stability maybe even Cody White here moves back to his original position and he's able to play there. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Bears do. They get Patrick at a bit of a discount, too. Uh, because he was that backup, you essentially get him two years, $8 million, $4 million guaranteed. Basically a prove-it deal. Prove to us that you can be the, the offensive lineman of our – one of the offensive linemen of our future, and we will pay you big money when you're 30 years old and you're ready to go. I like both of these signings. To me, these are those glue signings that I was talking about. These are those signings where, hey, we need some guys that can just get in there and, and, and get the job done right now. Who are those guys? So I like both of these signings. I think these will do well for the Bears. It's all a matter of health here for me with Nicholas Morrow. But if he's able to come back healthy and able to, to contribute and be the number two on this team, I think that you're doing something good there. And, of course, now you're seeing the Bears address that offensive line. You feel a little better, right? We were a little nervous. We were a little nervous. We were like, are the Bears actually going to address the offensive line here? What's going on with that? So I feel better about it. I think the Bears are going to do some good things. But I want to know how you guys feel, man. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you as well. How do you like the signings of Nicholas Morrow and Lucas Patrick? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you guys. As always, man, it's your boy, Path the Designer, back at it again to continue watching our Chicago Bears content. Make sure you guys check the links on the screen and the links in the description below. Ayo, Chicago. Y'all stay safe out there, man. Peace.